Hello everyone and welcome back to the latest, greatest episode, well, 13, but hopefully we'll get through 14, 15 really, really fast because in the country of Nex, which is just off the, shall we say, southern drawl of the inner sea region on Galorian, we're playing Pathfinder. We're playing second edition Pathfinder, but not the regular playtest. We're playing Arc Lords Envy, the Pathfinder Society adventure where our society members, all of them, have decided to finally get back together. They finish their errands and they find themselves at a soiree. Master Arif, on, shall we say, loan to the society once again. Long story, but if you want to know more, listen to our up and coming podcast, The Man from Osirian, where your Patreon support will help make this dream of Frank's and my own become a weekly reality instead of a monthly or bi-monthly reality. But we'll get into more of that later. I suppose I should take this moment to announce that DiceWise Entertainment drew its first breath on December 27th at 10.30 a.m. and is now in full support as a company, as an entertainment mogul to support the Rollmongers Network and, well, basically taking all of my debt and our debt and making it company debt. Hey, there you go. Hopefully that'd be a tax write-off. But more on that in the world of Patreon later. Tonight, our society members following themselves at a shindig of the highest quality in a ballroom. Tell me, Arles, that's some very shiny looking armor you got there. When's the last time you found yourself in a ballroom? And I'm talking like crying orphans that you're trying to convert to in Mode. I'm talking about an actual ballroom. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Do we even know what? the uh, the Pathfinder calendar in this game? Is anyone even looked at? Yeah, goes Thursday, and then not Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Six days of the week. It's don't ask the paladin. I don't know. It's not Thursday. <clears throat> this ballroom is filled with a dull roar of conversation, laughter, and music as you guys find the gathering is already in full swing. The space boosts a marble floor which is gleaming with a perfect shine. Lavish woven carpets and silk draperies over latticed windows, allowing a light evening breeze in. Glass globes holding color flames dangle from the ceiling overhead, illuminating the room as almost if it was the afternoon sunlit day. Guests, as you look around, hail from nearly every part of Galarian, flaunting everything from Varesian dancing scarves to colorful Gurundi garb, Kelashite headscarves to Voldrani wraps and Tyan silks. A distinctive construct engages in conversation with two robed women, a cleric of Nethys, god of magic and such, wears a half black and half white garment reflecting his holy symbol. It's racist. <laughs> it's it's part of the god's um, portfolio, man. It's, and it's a. I, I know, I know, I joke, I joke. Okay, that's all right. If the construct comes over and looks at you, Elf, and says, well, you people, then you can bitch. But right now, there's a tall... <laughs> What do you say to a construct that says you people? Because he's not technically alive. Everyone else is a person but him. But anyway. And a tall, leith figure near one wall wears a unique full body suit of leather armor. A small army of house golems moves through the crowd, serving hors d'oeuvres and a range of beverages, while a small orchestra at the far end of the hall performs selections from the latest Kintargan opera. I believe it was our paladin again, Arles, who we heard from last time. We noticed how shiny his armor was, and he's the only one that seems to blend into this menagerie of craziness in the high society world. Of course. Gra grabs grabs the closest, you know, golem that goes by with a drink and hors d'oeuvre and asked. Do you see how shiny my sword is? That's not what you asked. <laughs> my armor. It's very shiny. No. I know it's been a long time since we played this game, but <laughs> you don't even remember what you said. Oh, no, that, that question? Yeah. 
He's a construct. He doesn't have a soul. What the hell do I care? <laughs> <laughs> So it was, have you heard of Amode? Have you heard the good word, show? Yeah, oh, wait a minute, you're just a construct. You don't even have a soul. Now there's a chance for Matt to get upset that somebody, somebody's racist. That's the... racist! Right. Right. <laughs> you act the same way around gingers, that's the real question. In this game, that's ancestrist. It's funny, because in my head I do picture the elven races as like the hipster races. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like picturing this golem now that has red hair somehow, but okay. Again, yeah. there's no races in this game. That can't be racist. <laughs> it's only this ancestry? Oh, ancestry. that's true. It's all ancestry. Just... Oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and that's why we don't pay them for the jokes because, you know, some are good and just got to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you just got to. They can't all be gems, right? You just got to throw them out there and see what happens. Or they just end no, up on my editing room floor. Honestly, a, a, a pretty clever move on Piazio's part. They're just you like, we're not going to have racism in this game. Nobody can pitch at us at all. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make our own no game. races <laughs> Matt's blog second edition not racist <laughs> enough starts a blog all right going the around Trump. the room we know that our own Ryan Messina who you know as Merrick the mercenary from our Star Wars podcast we shot first who is playing our half orc militant raised cavalier in the soon to be revisited season one now that our prologue is done, season one of the War for the Crown, Dice Before Dishonor. Oh, I'm is, so excited. Is playing our second edition, fifth level Paladin of Imode. 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 Beside him. <laughs> <laughs> Beside him. Faster doesn't make it better. Not, not yeah. getting smoted by a shaft of light, because I can do that. Is oh, Matt yeah. Witt playing his female, but taking, borrowing the iconic elven rogue Marisil from the hat of second edition that's me moving around the room returning the missed uh i believe missed the last fight in interrogation jay tamlin playing his wizard that dabbled into a whole bunch of second was it you take feats to multi-class in this what they call it officially uh dedication feats dedication feats making him warrior like but he wasn't manly enough to stick around and interrogate the chick he just ran off no i was the one that ran off to catch her yes but you left I distinctly remember you physically leaving the game. That's so a character just kind of like stopped and they, they got all upset. They thought you were having a stroke. Who are you playing tonight? Uh, as far as I know, I am still Ab uh, Adima. You are. You are. Man of the man of the city. <laughs> the common man who knows all the commoners. Joe Gibson. Our 2000... 19 audition winner? No, not really. He's just an old friend. We don't have time to audition people anymore. After a year, a year of auditioning like 60 to 100 people, I, I, we were lucky to get Aiden Willems and Frank Hamilton out of that batch. <clears throat> no more, I see. We just go the well. Friends, neighbors, countrymen, loan us our ears. Give it up for Joe Gibson revising his role as Squee the Goblin, because you can play goblins in second edition. Isn't that neat? Squee well, the Mighty you can Warrior. Play a goblin in any edition. Yeah, you can, but <laughs> only if the GM allows it. It's and I special. Allow it. <laughs> Say hello, Joe. Hello. Next to him, filling in for our special cameo and friend of the podcast, mm -hmm. Ashley Florence, playing the iconic sorceress. We have Aiden Willems, who we've borrowed from Clinton's Car Classics, just determined to bring back Vraskin in some kind of shape or form, playing another caster. Who are you playing tonight? Uh, I am playing Kane, uh, the draconic, uh, arctic elf. Right. That's down here in the desert lead. Right. And my faithful new servant learning podcast from the master. Don't tell him I'm just kind of an amateur and don't really know what I'm doing. What Jared, fun. the intern, is with us tonight. Say hello, Jared. Make sure they're not thinking I'm just a figment. You're a figment of my imagination. Mike's muted, Jared. <laughs> Anytime, Jared. I'd Anytime. fire him, but I'm not paying him. Same. There we go. Same. All right. Hey. I don't know how this button works. This, <laughs> this coffee's cold. Get me another. <laughs> well, you asked for a nice coffee in the desert. Not, a, not Why do you want ice coffee? Not an desert? ice coffee. A nice coffee. Can't get good help these. Days. I didn't see that that shop anywhere. Nice coffee. <laughs> Let me go ask one of these people in this room. They all look like they have nice things. Uh, next are interns are the worst. So, with an overloaded crew, eight men on the mic, 
Because when there's that many men around... There's I'm, only two I'm... things going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't mention the other because we are a family-friendly podcast. We are a family-friendly <laughs> sausage fest. That's what this is. Okay. <laughs> Gentlemen. What's the plan? Right now, we're kind of huddled at the door. Behind you, a little old man poking you, last member with a stick, saying something about having a coupon and mistaking this place for a brothel before he gets thrown out. I'm going to sneak in and blend in with the crowd and see if I can pick up any interesting tidbits of information of gossip. All right. You gentlemen will notice that there are several skills you can use, as you can see <laughs> here. Several, several ways to go about gleaning information. Now, again, what I like about this murder mystery, it's like, if the players know who done it, maybe they can jump to the end and skip some stuff. If the players want to work the party and learn some stuff anyway, they can do this, 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 and this. And there's some in-between stuff. And I kind of like that open... The players really have... They always have a choice of what to do. But the module isn't on rails where it's like, they can do whatever they want until they get back to what's written in the module. And sure, any GM can, like, make up stuff and stretch the, the line. But this particular adventure gave me two murder suspects and we could have made either one the murderer i went with the person whose name i could pronounce better than the other one that i had no <laughs> <laughs> thank you wise decision jeff wise decision. <laughs> yep went with the murderer that i could barely pronounce their name as opposed to the one that i just kept saying over and over and went nope not gonna happen because like you know you're under arrest you know, who are you? Are you or, yeah, no, it's not going to happen. So, as you guys enter, of course you're served by ginger golems who ignore all your racist comments. And Maricel, with a nod and a wink, seems to slip off to the first sort of group of people chatting. You can use a stealth roll in this, amongst other things, to sort of blend in. I will. You can also use a, I believe it's a diplomacy. Where are we here? Do, 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 do. You can use several skills. Well, let me just run down your options, boys and girls. Because, um, well, it's my job. Well, I did say I was sneaking, so there's my stealth of 21. To eavesdrop. Yes. You guys can also use deception to impersonate a neutral party gore and linger near people to overhear information and just smile and nod and hold up your drink without like trying to look like a plant. Marcel puts a lampshade on her head and just disappears. Poof. Ninja smoke. You just can go up like and engage in conversation using diplomacy. Oh, it's still in this game. Great. Make a good impression and request to hear recent rumors. You can also use intimidation, which we just know Arles will refuse you know, to subtly bully people into sharing what they know. You can use socialize and, sorry, a socialite PC can use society to integrate yourselves into a crowd enjoying conversations throughout the event like you just convince these people that you're supposed to be here. You're as important as they are. And just ha 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 and full, full, full your way around. Then there's, of course, demonstrations like you're the entertainment. Arcana, occultism, nature, religion, relevant lores, all kinds of stuff. You know, we just come in and go, do you know? Blah, blah, blah. You guys have a lot of angles that can actually work off of skills to back up the role-playing. All of these things can give you guys bonuses. So, Marisol, with a starth check, an eavesdrop, and a lampshade, disappears. Next, well... I make an anti-stealth check. Okay. <laughs> Stomping into the middle of the room. I am here! <laughs> Stomping loudly into the middle of the room. Arles, what do you do? So, this is next, but what was before... Yeah. Okay. The whole uh, small group of party goers. Where's that goers? rimshot sound effect when yeah, you need? No, I was gonna say there's there's the, there's the nearby group of they got, they're all these little clicks of like threes and fours and sixes all over the room, right? And there's like the closest click near the center, and he he lays this on them, and there's that long pause. Some look confused, some look offended, and then luckily, can I have? I'd say this. This goes under. This is my opening. This is my opening stick. Yeah, I was gonna say this probably goes under so, uh, society. Right? Sure. Knowing what joke to drop as opposed to diplomacy. Give me a society check. Okay, that button was hit. Things are happening. Yep, no, society no, no, no. 14. That's good. Okay. So ah. it it falls just a tiny bit flat. But the coolest guy in that group decides it's hilarious and just 
rocks into ruckus laughter, and they all follow suit. Ah, one one even comes over and kind of pats you on the armor, like, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you, you know, you hey, don't touch the armor. They, they, you know, sort of part and let you into their little circle, and conversation ensues. Squee. <laughs> Every, two people have their own approach. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of racism. It's not long yeah. before somebody notices you and is like, well, it looks like they'll let just about anyone in here, won't they, Lovey? <laughs> I'm not Lovey. I'm you. I know. I have two heads. I don't even need a wife or anything. Mm, this two-headed freakazoid just keeps walking by. Now that's racist. <clears throat> what do you want to do there, Squeak? <laughs> There's not much a straight-class fighter can do. He can role play. Yes, <laughs> with skill or no, no skill. <laughs> okay, well, there's, you're there's, very. He's very excited that attack of opportunity cannot be done to him unless you have the feats. Are you telling me that none of those skills we just listed are open skills? Anyone? Uh, sure, they are, but I'm sure. Why not? I will try to break dance. Yeah, uh, yeah. Though, well, like I yeah. said, no, I will try to check. since. Yeah. Yeah. I'll use my small stature and squeeze near a circle of people to ease draw. Okay, so you've got stealth, or you stealth. also have... Yeah, I'll do um, my stealth. I think it's, what is it, diplomacy? Where are we here? Do, 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 can use deception. Oh, I'm dead, oh, wow. Stealth yeah. or deception, your choice. Stealth. One's actually hiding. The other one is like, oh, you're looking at me, but no, I'm acting like I'm supposed to be holding up this lampshade. Oh. Very nice. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's, he's, he's standing on your foot there, Maricel, and he's pulling on your ear like it's like the cord for the lamp. Convin like totally selling what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> that was his aid another. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And then he just goes on and like you know, uh, tests a few other lamps and, and globes and things, and then just disappears. You know, just melds into the ground. And we'll get back to you in a moment, Mister Willems. Yes. Kane, you're not with the society. You no, just kind of uh, fell in line, help with a fight. They said, like, "Well, thank you, but you could be a very useful guy at a party. You're a pretty charismatic, dude." Old man Arif insisted that you could be useful, and now you're at a party, high society. Yeah. Um. I will, I guess, keep an ear out and look around for any people talking about uh, the arcane or the occult. And when I find one of those, I will go in and toss dice at them. Okay. <laughs> Can I have a deception roll from you, sir, as you kind of loiter and listen? Because it sounds like you're doing the, not the eavesdrop thing, but the, you know, um, the other alternate here where you can sort of lean against the wall close to someone and hear what they're going on about. Uh, 12. 12. And Mr. Tamlin. Yes. Son. What can I do? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just thought I'd try that on air. I mean, he did marry my daughter last October. <laughs> Son. <clears throat> Negative two. What? Sorry. Um, what do you do? I mean, what do you do? <laughs> well... Abdemir had an intention of coming to such a party on his own anyways. I'm going to find the closest... He's crowd surfing. He's like, hey guys, what are you doing here? Murder, really? <laughs> He's the man. I'm going to be finding uh, the, the closest people that look like they're from away, from foreign countries. And be... You did hear the description in the box set, right? Like, you guys oh, are yes, the most yes. normal look. Even the Arctic Elf's going, oh, thank God I look like a regular person. <laughs> oh, yes, of... yes. But I'm looking for people that come from the like uh, the northern part of the inner sea. So, like, I'm looking for Verizians, Chelish, that kind okay. of thing. Yeah, yeah, no, there's some Verizian scarfs walking around and all that kind of thing. Okay. And I would like to go to talk to them and, uh, and try to convince them that while they're still here, they should check out a blacksmith shop. Give them directions. And... He's selling the old man shops. You're glad handing these guys. That is awesome. I love it. All right, uh, diplomacy, I guess. Deception. Does this, this does this place actually exist? Like, are you promising something that has yet to happen? You know, with your patron. Oh no, it exists. Okay. It's not yet magical, but it okay. exists. Okay, I, I would say advertising is probably diplomacy, right? Convincing people that yeah, sure. Okay, diplomacy. Unless you're making some grand promise about promo codes or something. 
24. Okay. Nice roll. Wow. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, you're uh, not that he needs to profile against Varesians or anything, <clears throat> but it'll, they're like, they seem very interested right off the bat. You're like, hey, you look like you need a blacksmith. What? Well, yes, we do. <laughs> Tell us more, local guy. You look famous. Do we know you? Oh, I'm soon to be famous. You yep. know me from future, right? Where is he? You look in future. <laughs> in future. You see the future. All the, that's that, that, that Haro cards or something, right? Yes. That's you racist. know future. You just you assume what? You just assume I have Haro cards just because I'm Verisian? Is that what 20. you're trying to say? Minus two. That just knocked it down to 22. Don't nah, you? you're the man anyway. I mean, it's all still over 20. <laughs> 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 Try not to roleplay so hard. It's messing with your rolls, dude. Okay. Moving ah. on. <laughs> Did we miss anyone? Let's go back to the beginning of this roll set. Old man Aerith. Oh, all right. Sorry. Let's go back to the He's beginning. still at the door filling his face, <laughs> convincing a golem that it's okay, that we're not racist. Right? Frank. You know, it just kind of looks around. Yes, it's, it's, it's quite the party. And then and kind of stumbles in, you know, introducing himself, doing a bit of glad handing as well. Yeah, like there there is ethical, non-ethical... Logical, non-logical, esoterical, sage-like, eccentric, you name it, we've got it. If you want to gravitate to something that looks like your peer group or something that just looks like damn interesting where you could learn something, go nuts. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I won't gravitate towards kind of my peer group. You know, I'm going to go outside of the, the comfortable circle and just start, you know, commenting on the passersby. Oh, it's a, a, a lovely skirt, yes, on, on that one there. You know, and just kind of like trying to engage people around me. In... <laughs> hey, 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 look at skirt. Yeah, it... he did. <laughs> That's not why I'm laughing. It might seem like he's chauvinistic or, or, you know, type of thing, but the large elfin warrior wearing a kilt goes, thank you. Well, you know what they say. <laughs> it's not a skirt, it, it's a kilt. It, it, if you're killish, but you're not, not not actually there, it's a skirt. I'm just going to go stand over here. <laughs> Guy moves on. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Your society, I would guess. You're going to try and join a crowd in conversation. You know, it might yeah. not be your society, but um, go right ahead. Okay, let's see. I've got a uh, 24. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm very tempted to hit you with that negative four. <laughs> like, racial well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely skirt. I mean, <laughs> forgive my translation. Mm. Oh, that's true. You're, you're common... What are they speaking next? It's right next to Katapesh. Uh, I believe it's Kadirin. Hmm. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, that would be even funny if the elfin warrior who's used to his own language didn't think he heard you right and just leans right down and goes, pardon? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> anyway, said and done. All right, decent rolls. Save one, all around. Now, getting back to the beginning, Maricel. Let's see what a few moments of eavesdropping or, you know, a suitable amount of time has learned you. What have you learned? What have I learned? You, you've learned that your right ear is not a pole chain at booting the goblin away. That's for damn sure. <laughs> a new Nexian tome has spurred a bout of infighting among the Ark Lords. Oh. While Cafane's Akhmet has already been slain, it seems that the fighting hasn't ended. Quite a scandal. So someone's vying for the top. Yes. Now, there are several Ark Lords. So they're just saying that this murder or this slaying, they're not sure it's a murder. Um, you think that would put a stop to it. Thor's come in and be like backing off going, damn. It's like, nope. It's just, he's the first casualty in this little, you know, little high society war. And uh, refresh my memory. What was the name of the uh, um, person who hired the sniper? Did she give it? Yeah, she did. Because we let her go, remember? Do you know if she lied? Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she just drops a random name. Bob. Yeah. Bob, where are you on the night? Of... It's... No, he was, he was one of the Ark Lords, so, yeah. but I just don't remember what it was. Nagasi. 
Nagasi, that's it. Okay. Anything, any juicy tidbits about Nagasi? N G A S I. It's a sounds. Now, again, not to be racist, I'm just saying Nagasi does sound like a Mogwai Expanse kind of name. Okay. Or somebody from East Kadira. I don't know. Just say. Or Jamaray. Or maybe in the Mana Ways. Not ruling out Catapest or Syrian or anything else that's on my map. <laughs> <laughs> Squee! Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Ar 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 sorry, Arles. Arles was, uh, was next in line for this shrewd, shrewd investigation. You know, you guys should stick just to like kicking in doors and mopping floors. The cool guy gets you into this collective and they're talking and they're in the middle of a discussion. Um, they drop a couple names. Ark Lord Nagasi Bakulu and Ark Lord name I can't mention because I can't pronounce it properly. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to cut and paste this. <laughs> this is a running joke with me because apparently, you know, common is fun. I'm going to cut and paste this. <laughs> it is. <clears throat> and cut and paste this into the chat log. And let okay. your resident grammar Nazis take a, a swing at it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, with all this, it actually won't be a swing so much as like a trouncing in the... Pakavu. Yep. Kaibenid? Prakavu? 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 It's like P R R A K H A V U. Prakavu? Kibenid? There's probably a little bit of phlegm in there. Prakavu? Prakavu? Kibenid? 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 It's like the guy from. That's that's my guess. Selkie from Perfect Strangers when he's in like. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop one, and he's like Axel Foley, and he's like Achmel, Achmel Foley, Ak Achmel, and they're like Axel, it's Axel, and he's like Achmel, Ach 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 and they they go Axel, and he just says Foley to, he just like tags the last name. Prakavu Kilimidid have both mentioned. <laughs> stay with me, Arles. I'm trying. <laughs> I would have say you ever seen a paladin jiggle in laughter? Kebaned. You let in with perfect. Kebaned. Kebaned. Arkward. Kebanid. All right, let's try this again. <clears throat> From the top. Ark Lord. Prakfu Kebanid. PK. Anytime. Ark Lord PK. I'm trying to move on. Nope. Ark Lord Nagasi Pugaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, wit. Sorry. Ark Lord Nagasi Bakaloo and Ark Lord Prakavu Kebanid have both mentioned interest in the collective der directives. I have a friend you know. His name is Bigger Stickers. <laughs> Have both mentioned interest in the collective directives text since news of it first surfaced, Juno. So two particular Ark Lords have spoken publicly or in certain circles going, wow, I really want that book. And they dropped those two names. And this, is a, this isn't a different group. Like, you guys aren't all spying on the same six people. Can you imagine, like, the center of the room? There's six people, <laughs> plus our paladin, the nearby lamp. There's, like, this little goblin jumping up at her ear, right? A few feet away, there's somebody, like, just trying to blend in. An orphan guy goes by and is like, what did you say about my pants? You know, all this stuff's going <laughs> like, one small crew. This is a very small party. Yeah, well, we'll have to reconvene and share information yes. to get a big, bigger okay. picture so, of the... Wait, this is, this is a, powerful, a powerful book we're talking about here? That these Ark Lords are interested in. Yes. The one that was pointed out to you that's supposedly at the Pathfinder Society Lodge. But are they as powerful as this book? And I produce, and I produce a book. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was just waiting for like, it's a podcast, dude. Like, I only shooting like the gaming map. Even the vodcast portion of this for YouTube can't see you holding up your little Bible. Is that the, not, the good book of Amode? It's the only book that's worth reading. Oh, okay. Because it can save your soul. Oh, okay. There Again, there's that big pause. And then the cool guy breaks in the ra laughter. They just think you're making a joke. Oh, this guy. I love this guy. You know. He's in there like, no, really. The, please read my book. 
<laughs> you imagine that? Like, you imagine those that come to your door, they call them pioneers if you're Joe's Witness and type of thing. Like, you know, have you heard the good word? You remember these guys, like, can you imagine these guys going to a party? In a little suit and tie, college years, you know, and they, they pull out like, their little books. And they, people imagine would... they don't really get invited to men. <laughs> they could crash a party. I mean, they're well dressed. They could, they could dress up, you know, pull up books. Oh like, man, either, I feel they're... so bad for the Mormons that crashed the college kegger. <laughs> oh, it's horrible what happens. To them. I don't know. <laughs> the brothers would be like, "Yeah, man, hold my beer," because you got two women, right? Sure. <laughs> Let's go with that. They can't yeah. all be gems. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I keep, I keep forgetting that the GM code on YouTube is not going to be edited properly. <clears throat> um, so we had uh, Arles uh, listening and waving his book about, and then moving down, we had Squee with a nice stealth roll of 18. Yes. Okay. Um, someone else is actually talking about some powerful Maguani woman named Nagasi. She is known for her powerful transmutations. And is heavily involved in the operation in the flesh forges in Echinus. Where's Echinus, you say? What passes Some for work. knowledge geography in this game? Bless you, Jeff. Is anyone? Anyone? No? Jared? Uh, it's an actual knowledge check. Yes, but is, is there knowledge geography or was it fall under? Probably maybe uh, specializing geography. in geography. Oh, so uh, what is that? What is that called? The, the specialization. Um, Not happening. Lore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lore. Thank you. Yeah. Well, they had him at lore. flesh, right? Geography. Yeah. Apparently, there's a factory that makes toes and squeeze all in. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a flesh forge, and I must find this Echinus. He's gone. He, Joe, I'm sorry, man. You I just wrote you right out of the game. <laughs> to Echinus. It is that way. <laughs> we must find. Consult your comrades and find out where this place is. It's, if it's a flesh forge that could just like make toes for you. You, could, you know, imagine the possibilities <laughs> of this place. She's always seeking ways to more effectively run the facility and especially for ways to stabilize the ancient technology. Uh, yes, I was very tempted to read that line differently. And that's what you've <laughs> learned in the first like couple of minutes. Kane, right. with his 12, was you were just kind of like leaning, you know, well, I, I was just trying to find like one of the two groups that might be talking about like arcane stuff or occult stuff. Sure. So. Sure. You do. Okay. Uh, find your, your twelve is a crappy way of like looking like you're supposed to be there, but they don't move off and they continue to discuss some very interesting ancient Nexian combat spells that Nex himself supposedly invented okay yeah then i will elaborate on that conversation okay at least try to okay let's have it 23 okay they hear you out and they're like bigby who in galorian is bigby i can understand the idea that you could make a giant hand that could smite a giant fist that could pummel fingers that could grapple but a single digit poking upwards to emphasize your distaste i just i don't understand how you'd use that in combat man well it just depends on where you stick it my good man but it's huge he says dancing around you know his pant his uh, parachute pants dancing out as if he is the giant hand extenuating his arms left and right like that's the circumference of the palm palm of said hand and his head is actually the single digit and he's snaking it upward going but where would you stick it moving on calm down joseph <laughs> just leave you with i'm sorry i get so excited <laughs> It's these stupid old writings. None of us have actually been able to cast this spell that doesn't exist in 2.0. Yes, yes. You're right. Thank you, darling. There, there. Anyway, there, there. Gives you a big kiss on the cheek. So, um... That's what you get for interrupting, Jared. <laughs> he gets smooched by the DM. That was good, though. You it's gotta, okay. You, you gotta like give it. it up for him. That was very good. Um... So, next we have, going down my list here, uh, diplomacy check from Abdima of 24. You were 
trying to sell your old man shop to a bunch of regions that were mildly offended that you seem to be profiling them, but you're so cool. The 22 stuck. The 24 became a 22 and it stuck. And they want directions. You know, they want to know hours of operation. They want to know how backlogged you are in orders. They want to know if you could take steel and pound it so thin it could be inserted and sewn into fabric like, I don't know, a Vrishan scarf. Nah. Takes all sorts. Master Aerith. Well, we already know what happened to you. <laughs> but uh, it's a party. You know, little old men. Um, they... It's, it's suddenly like you're... It's like a Mel Brooks movie, right? Where they're, they're doing something very interesting and then they always like, let's ask the rabbi! And the, the camera swings over and there's, you know, like your... your um, with the curls, what they call them, the orthodox guy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't know what you you know what you'd say about the soup, but you know there's chicken in it. So anyway, um, so he, he he leans over, you know, kind of hearing snippets of conversation, and I, I think that was Big, Bigby's insertive finger. Yeah, it's a devastating spell. But anyway, uh, oh look look over there. <laughs> look over there, and it's like the hand snatches more hors d'oeuvres from right, right of the guy's personal plate so you don't have to like wait for a ginger golem to come by and get you more there you go all right um still more to be learned do you guys want to kind of like rotate and go again yeah all yeah. right so uh let's go you back to matt dirty talker <laughs> um <clears throat> let's go with <laughs> well this lampshade has served its purpose trying to ch yeah. time to check out the other side of the room very interesting yeah, so, uh, well okay so i've had a listen so maybe now it's time for a little bit of schmoozing you listen to one group in one corner yep now did you want to see what your comrades have found or do you want to just like to start entering the party uh, i'm gonna work the room my friend all right all right so like i said i've had a listen yep you know, uh, and I check to integrate yourself into the crowd. Absolutely. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Sure. <clears throat> you may also demonstrate your magical ability and knowledge via a society check. check of 18. Oh, OK. It's always room for one more elf. We don't want to look that, like we're racist. They include you. That, uh, <laughs> slip it right into um, Actually, I go from from stealthy to slipping into the conversation that I was eavesdropping on. Um, maybe just doing a gentle uh, inquiring more into um, the Milwaukee. Do you guys remember who your host is? Oh, some hick, right? No, yeah. no, the host. Like, you got to give it to Jay Tamlin, who's actually doing what everybody else is supposed to be doing. Your host is the Merchants League. This is a party put on by the Merchants League. So the fact that he's pitching a shop, they just like, oh yeah. Oh, I'm selling something. <laughs> the rest of you guys are gossiping like a bunch of old ladies. Have you heard the latest about that skirt? You know, like, <laughs> he blends right in. I just thought I'd point that out for as much as I tease him. Fantastic. Yes. I don't know. I think talking about Big Beast multiple appendage spells is totally worth it. Oh yeah, always. Always. There's <laughs> there's a really great scene in but oh what's that? My New Year's resolution to not go on so many tangents and tell so many stories. Sorry. Moving on. Right. So yeah, just uh and and, and lean the Inquisition more towards the um <clears throat> the Ark Lord whose name I have already forgotten again. Actually, you know, that is a tangent does. worthwhile. What the hell? New Year's resolutions. Does anybody have a gaming New Year's resolution? New Year's resolution be damned. I am greater than my will. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so you have the willpower to overcome your own willpower and trans trump trample Dude, your New Year's resolution. That's, that's freaking willpower. <laughs> you know, we 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 did we could ask the fan base, you know, so, or, or I could put up a, a poll on Twitter, you know. Don't be putting polls anywhere, Jeff. Just get on with the game. I'm just saying. Just saying. So really gets like option one, less tangents from me. Option two, Aiden be nicer to me. Option three. You know. Option two is never going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> from the actual community base right here. Yeah. <laughs> Look for the poll on Twitter. It's coming soon. Anyway, before January's out, 
I shall have I shall have my I shall have my vindication from massive people that have no idea. For what it's worth, Jeff, five votes is not a is not an accurate sample size. Wait, <laughs> you know, when they when you actually do those polls, they just go with percentages. So if you have like one guy vote on one thing, it's like one hundred percent this and zero zero zero, and then like three guys vote, it'd be like fifteen, fifteen, fifty. You know, like it just it doesn't really tell you. Anyway, <clears throat> no vindication for me, <clears throat> Matt. Never. I mean, uh, shall we? So yeah. you're socializing. You're blending in. Squee, what are you up to? I will go uh, relay my information to lovely little man meat and shiny metal. Okay. <laughs> Since he is pretty much the party-ish leader. So. He's, he's your best friend. I mean, yeah. just say it. He's got the biggest toes. <laughs> he keeps them under wraps. Yeah. One day they'll be yours. Yeah. Then you talk move to on to the next party. And talk to him. You know, kind of weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you seen any miracles? Has he proven his holy... I don't know, you know. I remember that because while he was doing all his healing, you were like, I got this. And you kept falling off the giant golem foot and just kept <laughs> jumping back on there. I got this, you know. Okay. But yeah, that's what I'll do. And what had you learned? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I totally forget. <laughs> no, right? Has it been that long since your turn? It has been. It's been a while. That's what happens when you cram yeah. through people. Don't worry. We're not going to be in the habit of like overloading the microphones. We'll, we'll cut back in each game to like four or five guy stops. I count as three myself. Such a Mike hog. Such a ham I am. Sam I am. I am the ham. Okay. You learned that two powerful Ark Lords, one whose name I can pronounce, one I will not try to again, were both mentioning interest in that collective directives text since news of it had first surfaced that it was out there. And you give the paladin those names. Okay. Now, Arles, getting to Arles, yes. one of the two names he gives you is someone that your group was talking about, how this Moagi woman was known for a powerful mm -hmm. transmutations. Transmutation magic being things like polymorphing, flying, you know, turning your appendages into mutation type creaturey things, you know, stuff like that. Ah. And for some reason, the goblin is very fixated on where she works, a place called Echinus. And he's dying to take, he wants you to take him to see the Flesh Forge. <laughs> he already, he's got the Mickey Mouse ears. Not, Let's go to freaking Disneyland, Dad. Now, now, the, now. The, now. The, the cape. Squee wants to go. <laughs> Squee wants to go. <laughs> Show him the bathroom. <laughs> Squee, what, Squee, what is it? Not now. Um, this, I get, what, this, what's the name of this location? The, the Acanus. Acanus? Yep. This the, the Flesh Forge. The Flesh yes. Forge. Acanus, the Flesh Forge. Stevens! I'll even give you, I'll even be nice and throw it in as like an Audra Canna if you don't have the specific geography. I was going to ask Steve. Oh, cool oh, yeah, the place is full of mages. I have no idea. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me ask my new best friend. You. The Steve. Steve guy. The popular guy who thinks I'm just full of jokes. Sure. Steve? Uh -huh. My name is Raul. This guy is so funny. He thinks I'm Steve. You I'm look St like a Steve. I'm Steve for you, darling. Okay. Here's my friend Adam. <laughs> Joe got it. <laughs> My buddy Adam recently left Eve and now he's with me. Have you heard of We've just thing? decided to be completely sexist, racist, and several things in this particular one shot because we really can't do it in our regular shows. Oh, yay for editing. No, it's not going to. I told you. <laughs> the YouTube's going to bury us because I don't edit it. It just gets music. Oof. Do you, do you many, how many call sign, how many monikers, how many sayings that we've dropped? How many times I've edited like you and Messina? I roll the 20. I win the game. And you, Star Wars, blah, 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 you know, tagging this stuff. Frank's boots and pants thing. Oh, you don't have to edit any of us doing impersonations of stuff that could be copyright infringement. No, no, not, not, not copyright. I mean, like, <laughs> ever. I'm just talking to about, let you like, know, just make, you're like, allowed to impersonate stuff. I'm talking they about. They can't take that shit away from you. No, no, no. I'm yeah. talking about us coming up with our own catchphrases. I'm known for saying things like just saying and, you know, you know, you know, you know, constantly on the end of my sentences and stuff. You guys all have little quirks and that I've 
made jokes of or we've tried to you know highlight and the one time somebody approaches me and says my friends don't feel that your dice rolls are legit they don't believe in theater of the mind so i'm like okay i will make this one thing this one podcast that we're doing this one shot dark lord's enemy second edition well our dice rolls are as legit as roll 20 lets them be yeah well you can see them actually roll the virtual dice they'll see the dice rolls yep in this content right and what what one slip of the tongue one saying one catchphrase that i utter and you back up becomes a freaking meme across the internet that these guys just cling on to and they like they text each other phone on with their phones when I said we have to tighten our something and tighten our sphincters and you went fabulous and like one of the opening episodes of this series and that's it. Really? Yes. That actually happened? That actually was said between you and me and I was talking about us, you know, uh, tightening up our roles and tightening up our, yeah. And apparently they all just fell over peeing themselves. So, <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, that is gold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're listening to this. Was, like, wow, we did that. Yeah. No, they're listening Just to this like, right now. Well, not right now, but when I air this, they'll listen to this and they'll be like, no, please don't say our name. No, I would never. I would never say that. I'll say who you are. But you know, you know who you are, Dice Doubters. Doubt no more. And please put help us put it something other on a t-shirt besides I tighten my sphincter. I can't put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> well, the role mongers, are we? Hey, you put a pictogram of that. Oh, no, but that's great, though. Tighten your sphincters, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to start. <laughs> How do I start a game? Hello, everyone. No, Jeff, you can't say that anymore. Okay, cue the DM's first dice uh, drop. Just, that was pretty cool, but no, yeah. I, I do actually not mind the cue the DMs first dice, dice drop, but, uh, you know, like catchphrase isn't something you can just invent yourself. It's something that's invented for you. It's magic that happens outside of your own purview. Oh, no, uh, I'm so, not saying so this is canon. your sphincters is, just... is our catchphrase. Oh, no, I'm, I'm... <laughs> this is, I this wholeheartedly is embrace that. Yeah. In fact, in fact, um, you embrace the sphincter. I may start dropping that in my day to day. I'm, I'm not saying I invented the catchphrase hoping it would catch on. I'm just saying these are the things that if it were me, I'd looking back in nudge, nudge, wink, wink, hindsight of oh uh, of <laughs> <laughs> that uh you know you think You're these things would catch on right like joe's played with us just a little bit and his man meat thing you know we almost had man meat entertainment no no it's now it's dice wise entertainment <laughs> <laughs> text everybody give us a name that'll fly for a company there's some good ones everything from dice hive to man meat to uh hung moose hungry moose you know all kinds of stuff anyway the night drones on. Arles? Yeah. Do you have uh, Knowledge Arcana? So that you can find out where, you know, where Echis is. And if they have, like, a theme park you can take your goblin to. And I am highly untrained. I have a total of one point in Arcana. Yeah, but that's, it's opening the skill to you. It doesn't hurt to roll. Sure. Unless you're just shoving him aside going, I don't even want to think about it right now. I'm busy being... I'm, Oh. <laughs> I'm busy being friends with Steve over here. Yeah, I got a tall, solid three. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was trying to ask Steve where it is because uh, me and Arcane. If it doesn't come out of this book, you know. Yeah. It, You've never heard that. of a flesh forge. Never. Uh, no. <clears throat> that is, neither have I. It's silly, right? That's right. Flesh forge. But is you know it? what's not silly? Eomedic. Yeah, you can, you can imagine, okay. Let's let's pan to Squeeze face. Now this is something Joe can't role play because we're not doing video, okay? But now p the camera pans to Squeeze face, and the same effect of this goblin is you just told a five year old that Disneyland doesn't exist because you've never. You've never <laughs> 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 but the people over there are talking about it, you know. They gave me these, you know. They gave me these toes to wear on a hat, you know. Like go to the theme park. You lying. <laughs> <laughs> goes goes up running off into the crowd crying. <laughs> No, 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 no. This is a warrior. He go, he's, he'll go collect evidence. <laughs> Toes. <clears throat> and one by one, they drift away from the murder mystery investigation. Who's next? <laughs> what else did we have? Kane. <laughs> yes. Kane was talking about arcane things. So they're, they're, they're flesh forged this and a can is that. They go on and on and on about you know how great she was and she works there. And if I could just get myself down to the mana waste on the bo southern border next and get a job at this factory, 
you know, the type of thing. If, if, you know, she's here at the party, you know, and they're all they're all talking about it wouldn't be great, you know, if we could schmooze with her and get into this. T- it's a tight gig, you know. They just won't shut yeah. up about Echinus and Flesh Forges and, you know, completely away from the other side of the room where some drama about uh, mouse katirs and toe katirs are going on. What okay. are you doing? Uh, <clears throat> well, I don't know. Actually, I have no... Would the party have it brought me up to speed on what's going on? Well, you were, you just... were interrogating. You were helping interrogate that Afrit assassin about who her master was. And you know what I mean? Okay. And she okay. dropped she dropped the name Nagasi. And this is the one that they're mentioning. Yeah. As ties to the Flesh Forge. Yeah. Okay. Would I know what DM's that DM's just is? like whacking you over the head with a bone here, buddy. and <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Pony up if you want in on this. Yeah, I'll, I'll continue the conversation. I'll toss him what I know about it and ask more. Okay. Uh, knowledge Arcana going out. Okay. Uh, another 23. So you start talking about what you know about the concept of, of uh, flesh forging and, and uh, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. All right, awesome. Uh, moving down our list here. Who we got to? Arles. Yeah, bum, 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 bum. Uh, Dima. Okay. It was wonderful speaking with you all, but I do have to move on. Uh, and then I immediately, you said that when we walked in, there was someone that was dressed in black and white, clearly a cleric of Nethys. We all seem bummed. They're like, call me. Yeah. I beeline. Okay. And begin talking about, um, again, it introdu- and talking more about the introduction of magic to my shop. I, I believe... The impression they gave was sort of wizardry, but he, you know, he venerates Nethys, which is god of magic. Yeah. Uh, hang on a second here. Bup, 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 bup. No, no, you're right. It is a cleric of Nethys wearing half black, half white, reflecting his holy symbol, which is half black and half white. Okay. Yeah, I would go to him and start asking about whether or not um, he would be interested in um, donations from our shop after we start work uh, start working with magic items in exchange for maybe some help from some uh, from some of his acolytes in the creation because there are spells that I can't access. Oh, so you're you're looking to negotiate like a contract. I need your divine power of enchanting. We've got the best masterwork stuff in town. What do you say? That kind of thing. Yeah, like there's there's I I've got the arcane side, but I need someone to help me with the divine and who better to ask than a cleric of magic okay well i'll give you the fact that he's probably mid to high level because he's here at this party Mm -hmm. uh but the percentage chance i'm about to roll is is he a local is he the type of guy that has you know what i mean is he like traveling or is he a socialite or is he somebody that has roots and access and entourage and you know is a memorable person at said church nearby as opposed to someone that is just visiting you know yeah no that was definitely an assumption on my part no that's fine uh no Sorry, I mm. do have acolytes, but I don't. Uh, you know, he's not um, not a local and not in business, but he is interested in um, in your shop. He is interested in the, maybe you, you could do something where you would sell him an item and he can enchant it, and you could verify that it's you know like working with you on making a one shot for himself. It'd be like a, a, a player going, "I want to craft an item." How do I do this? Oh, well, I'll, instead of making it myself, I'll talk to the local blacksmith. I'll I'll pay for the masterwork item. Then I'll enchant it myself. Ha ha, I'm so clever. You know, he's turning yeah. you into like the, the NPC and like he's the player going, oh, let's, let's talk. Where are you going? Come back here. You know, <laughs> we can talk about this a little bit more. I uh, mean, business is business. Okay. Now, everybody in this game has a personal DC. It's like your level plus your current modifier and yada yada. So you guys would be like, it's like 10 is the base, plus 5 for your levels, 5. And then your, I guess since I'm trying to negotiate something with you, would be going off of your wisdom. You know, is this a good idea, is a bad idea? So what's your wisdom modifier? Wisdom modifier is 0. Is 0. So assuming the DC is 15. Okay. And I roll 12 plus 3 at least to get, I'm pretty sure he'd have that. Uh, to say that he beats your DC, I'm not forcing you to do anything, but his offer to buy 
you know what I mean? To like to contract uh, a half a dozen weapons, and you know, it sounds legit. Sounds like good business to you, at least. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, right. So, who? Frank. He's gone. No, nope, sorry. I I just came back. Oh, okay. Ah. Sorry, I was talking to my wife. Sorry. The Olfen in the skirt. Yes. They ran out and they got one of those Vegas next weddings, the south side of Quantium. No? No, I'm, I'm just trying to work <laughs> with what's happening in the, you know. Uh... Old Man Arif. Fish. You're working the crowd. Yep, uh, the continuing working you... cloud. Is there any gossip that I can overhear, you know, by yep. just... Yep, um, like I said, yeah, I'm... Uh, another society check to, like, Get yourself in good with another click and just kind of, you know, get get them going, get them smooching, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I wanted to kind of do another round and then do another round of, like, reveals, you know. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm new with this character sheet, so I'm trying to get it to That's roll fine. without... Oh, there we go. A 12. Slightly less than spectacular. <laughs> Um, they're talking about they're into these the new group or whatever is interested in gossiping about all kinds of things, but none of them seem to lead you to anything that's the hottest news about Nex himself, the book, the investigation, the murder, or some of the names that you know these guys are are getting. So, not at the moment. Now, getting back to uh, did I miss anyone in the second round? I think we all had a second go. Uh, getting back to Maricel, you as well were like just being sociable. Matt? He's also gone. He's also gone. No, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Ah. Um, yes. So I was uh, interjecting myself into a circle and uh, okay. seeing if I can pick any right. tidbits of knowledge out that would... Uh... There is There is one. There is one thing that comes up. About Nagasi? No, it's like the two of them you know, like you, some people are expressing interest, you move on type of thing. And like, unlike you, some of the party guys, they split up and they go on, they, you know, they schmooze and see what else somebody's, you know what I mean? Somebody that's yep. interested in like burying another Ark Lord's name or propping them up, you know, helps their status. It's a socialite thing. Oh, Lord, this movie's hot. This actor's hot right now. I was part of that set. Did you know I worked on it? Oh, I helped him with the script. You know, you're inflating your own position. Then there's okay. like the downside, you know, did you see that meme they made about him? Oh no, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, First, they're talking about the other Arc Lord, Prakivinu. Uh He's a devoted Vadrani student of Nexian lore. Uh, he's known to claim that an ancestry of Nex's own um, contemporary ally, um, Kilbin Sarad, um, seems convinced that nothing Nex wrote was solely mundane. Now, do you guys remember that the, the book just seemed to be some kind of list? Yep. Um, this guy is really, like, these people are saying that this Ark Lord is really, really, really in to that Da Vinci Code kind of stuff. Like, this Ark Mage next left behind everything he said, everything he did, everything he wrote down wasn't just for surface use. They had a deeper meaning. You just got to combine them. You got to find the, you know, the cipher that would combine them all. It's like people going over Da Vinci notes going, what if they're all connected? You know, that kind of thing. Okay. This will, you could say this guy is a true follower. Now he might be misguided. Maybe this is true. Maybe this is untrue. But this guy, these people are saying he's a true follower of Nex. Um, and Prakavu specializes in uh, conjuration magic. Now to counter that, this is the, probably the juiciest thing going on to that proverbial hour of everyone schmoozing is someone counters going well talk about a true follower is also they're like a collector and the Nagasi I heard that Nagasi was bragging to Steve and some of the others Adam and the rest of them that <laughs> she'd quietly been bragging earlier this evening about having obtained the collected derivatives itself. I'm just saying. Dun, 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 That's right. 
Tighten your sphincters, everyone. It's go time. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. I like it. I like it. I can't help it. I like it. I like it. Oh, God. Oh, man. You're a that's a bad good. influence on me. That's good. No, I'm not even kidding. I'm going to start using that in my everyday. <laughs> now, I pay good money considering what you do for a living in construction and like hang out with some real, you know, manly men. Hey there, Bob. Slap Let's see him if we on can the get back. This one to, Let's yeah. tighten our sphincters and get this tight, carpentry tight, done. Tighten your sphincter, folks. Let's get that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give it a week. Laid off or not. It's like, Matt, you look beat up, buddy. Like, really, really badly. <laughs> <laughs> like, shit, man. You look like someone just drove their pickup over you. Well, five of the guys hit you down and said, pardon? <laughs> that is the area we live in. It really is. Yep. But, uh... Uh, he's referring to sort of a redneckish, redneckish sort of area of Canada where there's, you know, uh, hunting, beer drinking, hockey enthusiasts, lots of pickup trucks, uh, beautiful scenery, the Kawartha Lakes up here, you know, lakes and, and fishermen galore and, you know, the whole bit. Anyway, uh, sport, the sportsmen, the hunting, the fishing, it's all very big up here, as well as, you know, um, camouflage coats, orange hats and... <laughs> Boy, you sure do have a pair of mouth. Now, there's something you'll never hear up here in Canada. <laughs> we have a lot of Burt Reynolds fans up here. I have, I love the Cannonball Run series and a few other of his movies, but, you know, never saw Deliverance, and uh, I'm not waiting for him to show up to save me with a crossbow, but that's why I hear it happens. <laughs> Squeal like a pig. Mm -hmm. So, feeling in your gut that you have the hottest news of the evening, Maricel. And a good hour and a half going by at this party because I got a good hour and a half. A good hour yeah, going so I'll by. take I'll, <laughs> I'll take my my juicy tidbit and I'll uh, do the whole like make the eye contact, head nod over into the quietest looking corner in the in the area, okay. see if I can uh, rabble rouse my companions okay. to powwow and share information. All right, so. She gives you the, the rogue gives you the, the secret wink boys and starts plucking you, you know, gathering up the troops, bringing you all around to the center of the room where a uncomfortable looking of socialites have distanced themselves from what looks like an argument between a parent and its child. <laughs> As Squee has impaled some sorcerer by the foot and dragged him across the room bleeding, standing on his chest, insisting that he is right. And that he got it from a good source, pointing at this bleeding sorcerer who's like passed out in pain. And the paladin is just trying to like hold his cloak out wide the way you do like when your kid made a mischief and you don't want the rest of the public to see it. <laughs> kind of thing. Convening here on this. Squee, this isn't how we win, win arguments. <laughs> Squee's right. He's wrong. This isn't how Ewa Day says that we convert others. <laughs> <laughs> It's too bad your proof passed out there, Squee. Your enthusiasm <laughs> is great. But seriously, stop stabbing people. Yeah. You're very exuberant. I can appreciate this. You imagine it like five minutes ago. I was like, excuse me, mister. <laughs> Would you come over and explain to my paladin? No, I'm busy. Fuck off, little goblin. <laughs> the eyes get wide, right? He goes back to that scene where that stupid guard was like leaning down. E-A-B. <laughs> and we all determined that if one more guy... <laughs> Treated him badly. Oh my god, my foot! <laughs> Just passes out in pain. And here we are. <laughs> Keeping a low profile at a high society party. Right? Not, yep. This is yeah. now. Pulled out his party pick. If second edition is supposed to be the future first edition, and we have Frank Hamilton's. Um, Man from Osirian podcast pending, which is all sort of a prequel to this. <laughs> you know, like he's he's run the gamut of James Bond's Pathfinder Society wannabes, femme fatales, Taladian overachiever art, you, you name it. So he was looking for something different. And when he walked in the room, he's like, I don't want to do the regular murder mystery. I don't want to do the spy thing. I want to look for some interesting people. You know, he's got his back to the rest of you guys causing all this interesting ruckus and he's just talking to some regular dude in a kilt and a bunch of people about regular shit <laughs> so you're all gathered up 
Marissa, I couldn't help you notice making eyes at us. <laughs> yeah, I, just I, like... I respect you as a companion. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I, I am not attracted to you in that way. <laughs> Eyebrows are through her forehead, and she's like looking at you, and the two palms, hands out, are flexing straight down at the body, like, really? <laughs> Sorry. Now, if you don't mind, I'm trying to explain this to you. <laughs> 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 that there is no Disneyland in Eckes. And... <laughs> now is not the time. We'll talk later. Arles, my good man. Squee, behaving yourself as usual, I see. I happened to pick up the wonderfulest tidbit of information. I heard that the Ark Lord Degasi. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> Vindicated, stop there. We'll see you next week. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha!